If you were to ask me what my most used tools were in the workshop, after the obvious lathe, mill and hacksaw, you'd probably find the tap wrench to be pretty high on that list. It probably doesn't come as much of a surprise because it pops up in almost every project that I do. Now the one that I use is the one that comes with the tap and die set. I'm pretty sure most of us have one that looks exactly like this kicking around, and there's probably a factory in China that cranks these out by the million. Now obviously it is able to do its job, but it does have its issues. For one, nothing really fits together correctly. That channel in the middle is a bit too wide for the clamps and it does tend to wobble around. And the same thing goes for the handles. The clamps are also made from pretty soft steel and as you can see they've deformed quite a bit over the years and as a result it doesn't clamp flush on the taps anymore. Now don't get me wrong, it still works, but all these things do add up to making tapping a straight hole more awkward than it really needs to be. Now I do have a backup tap wrench on hand. This one is probably a hundred years old, and it was in fact made by my great great grandfather. Personally, I really like the design, and it's kind of similar to those Starrett tap wrenches that you see a lot of the pros use but unfortunately, there is a lot of damage to one side. It really is a shame, but unfortunately, there just were times where we weren't able to look after these tools properly. I'm not exactly sure how it got to be in this condition, but it's been like that for as long as I can remember. One day, I'll have to try and go in and clean up the rust, but that's a project for another day. In the meantime though, I'd like to recreate this old design, hopefully make a few improvements, and by the end, we'll be left with a much better tap wrench. We'll start the project by making the body, and I'll start off with a piece of 28mm low carbon steel. Now for a lathe like this, this is going to be a lot of stick out on that part, and even with a live centre, it really wanted to chatter. Eventually though, with enough trial and error, I found a setup that seemed to work. With most of it machined, I can now swap in the collet chuck so I can feed most of that material into the spindle bore. With the stock now cleaned up, I can now machine in the tap wrench handle. The overall dimensions aren't all that critical here, but it would be nice to get it as close as I can to the original. And so far I'm pretty happy with it. Next I need to blend in the corner. The original uses a chamfer on one side and a fillet on the other. I'm pretty sure both of them would look perfectly fine, but I'm going to go for a fillet on my one. The 
end is also rounded off. I could use a file to make it, but I wanted to break out the old ball turner. The final thing left to do is knurl the handle to give it a better grip. It's definitely not the best type of knurl tool for this lathe, as you'll probably see, and in fact I've always had troubles getting good knurls with this tool. It took a fair amount of adjustment to get it looking like this, but what I'll do in the future is swap it out for one of those clamp style knurl tools. Apparently they work much better on smaller lathes like mine. With the handle now done, I'll pull out the stock a little bit more and then clean it up with some 240 grit. I'm not looking for a super polished finish, just enough to remove most of the machining marks. If I make the tool look too nice, the chances are I'll probably never end up using it, just in case I scratch it. Now I've just cut the threads for the moving jaw on the tap wrench. Here I've used M12 as opposed to half inch on the old one. But looking at them both, it looks like my one looks a little bit coarse. I mean the threads look a little bit big. And that seems to be correct. When measuring it, the threads on the old one are half inch by 20 TPI. And that works out to being fine thread imperial. If only I had a fine thread M12 tap and die laying about that I haven't used in three years. Oh well, maybe next time. Over at the mill, I'll start to machine in the flats with the face mill. I could probably do it in two or three passes, but since there isn't much holding the part in place, I'll take lighter cuts. Next I need to cut in the 90 degree notch to hold the square drive. I started off using my brooch cutter mounted in the quill. It started off working well, but eventually the tool pressure became too much for the quill to handle. So instead I chose to do it the old fashioned way, and that was with needle files and a lot of patience. It's not a quick process, in fact it probably took me close to an hour to do it, but when you do it correctly and you get good results from it, it's really satisfying to do, and to be honest, it is a good skill to have.
and I'm really happy with the results. Definitely not saying that I could have done as well two or three years ago. With the main parts now machined in, there's still one thing left to do, and that's to heat treat it. As it is at the moment, the steel is quite soft and it risks getting damaged over time, like the other tap wrench did. However, the stock that I used to make it just doesn't have enough carbon in it to quench harden it, which means I'll have to case harden the part. I'll first have to make a packing box for the part, since none of my current ones were a suitable size. I have a piece of pipe on hand that is the perfect size for the job, but unfortunately it is galvanised. Not really great for welding or case hardening, since the zinc burns off and creates gas at high temperatures. I've had a few people tell me that vinegar dissolves galvanising, and I thought this would be a great opportunity to give it a go. Now initially it did look promising, it started to bubble after the first few minutes, so what I did was I left it overnight. However, it didn't seem to work as well as I was expecting. The ends are pretty good, it's stripped that clean, but the middle part is pretty much untouched. I'm pretty sure a stronger acid would do a better job, but it is what it is. Thankfully though, I did have a backup plan. So what I did was I welded up the bottom and then I placed it in the forge for about 10 minutes. The goal here is just to burn off any zinc. Better that I do it now than when it's case hardening. And of course you do want to be careful about the zinc fumes. Definitely not a good idea to do this without a respirator. With that done, I can now start to pack the cylinder with the tap wrench and a mix of crushed up charcoal and sodium carbonate. This is going to be our source of carbon for the steel. The packing box is sealed with clay and then placed in the forge for about two and a half hours. If everything goes well, a small amount of carbon will diffuse into the outer layer of steel and that raises it to a point that it can be hardened. So when I then harden it, the outside layer will harden and that should protect it from any damage. Now after emptying it, it would seem that the seal that I made wasn't as good as I initially thought as a fair amount of scale has built up on the part. But thankfully a buff on the scotch bright wheel seems to clear it up. I'll coat the part in some flux to protect it from any more oxidation and then I'll get it back in the forge to quench harden it. After tempering the part in the oven, I can then use the buffing wheel to remove most of the scale. And that part has turned out really nicely. I'm not going to do a bite test to see how hard it is, but if everything worked out right, it should end up being about 55 Rockwell C hardness. Next I'll make the moving jaw, and for this I'll be using a piece of W1 tool steel. I'll also be hardening it too, to avoid any damage to it, and using tool steel will make hardening it a lot easier. The first thing I need to do is get it down to size.
I'll then flip it in the lathe and then cut it down to length. Okay, well that V-notch seems to fit quite well, and it should be able to hold on to all of my taps, ranging from M3 to M12. Next, I'll drill a hole for an alignment pin. The final thing left to do is harden that V-notch at the end. And whilst I let that temper in the oven, I'm going to make the end cap. Now once again, the knurls proved to be quite difficult to do. I'm not exactly sure if I'm doing something wrong, or if it's just the fact that I'm using the wrong style of tool for this size of lathe, but I just couldn't get the coarse pattern to form. It is what it is though, and I'm still happy with it. Well, it looks like I need a tap wrench to make my tap wrench. The final thing left to do is add a pin to the moving jaw. I'll be using a piece of ground silver steel and I'll just lock tight that in place. I'm also going to need a spring. Okay, well that turned out pretty great. Overall, I'm really happy with it. I do wish I got the nose right, but apart from that, it's pretty good. In fact, when holding onto it, it's really comfortable. A lot nicer than the old tap wrench. And I'm really happy I went with a fillet on those corners because that is really comfortable to hold onto. And as you can probably see, it holds taps really well and really securely. And the result is probably what we were all expecting, but it feels so much nicer to do it when you have a good fitting tool. Overall, really happy with this project, and I'm really happy that I have a proper tap wrench. And that about does it for now. I hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you very much for watching. See you next week.